Isn't this great? Yeah. I, I love this. Uh, the church we planted in Michigan, actually the, the, our mother church in Grand Haven, Michigan, in the summertime, I think for the first six or seven years they existed, from May through August, they met outside every Sunday. Just kind of a, in the ball field there by the YMCA, Grand Haven, Michigan. There's a story actually that's found in this book we've been talking about, Draw the Circle, about a guy named Rodney Gypsy Smith. And he was born in 1860 on the outskirts of London, England, and uh, even though he had no formal education, he lectured at Harvard. Even though this guy uh, really came from humble beginnings, he was invited by two sitting presidents on separate occasions to come to the White House. So how does this happen? How, how does a guy like this crisscross the Atlantic Ocean 45 times and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to millions and millions of people. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? And, and, and his life, in, in so many ways, was just used powerfully to make a huge difference. It wasn't his preaching, even though he got a chance to do that to tons of people. Um, it, it really wasn't that that made a difference. And it, and it actually uh, said this, Preaching may move the hearts of men, but praying moves the heart of God. Isn't that good? Yeah. Preaching may move our hearts, but praying is really what gets God on board and moves his heart. And so there was this group of people who wanted to talk to Gypsy uh, about how they too could make a huge difference with their lives to the kingdom of God. So they got together and they met with him and, and they said, what, what can we do? What, what are the steps? What's the, the, the formula, if you will? And here are the words he gave. He says, go home, lock yourself or lock your door, kneel down in the middle of your floor and with a piece of chalk, draw a circle around yourself. There on your knees, pray fervently and brokenly that God would bring new life within that circle. Can you imagine that? We always want God to come and bring new life and to revive our city or our school or you know our, even our family. But how often do we start with us? How often are we willing to kneel down and say, God, do whatever you need to do in my life so that everything else can be changed as well? And so, God, today I pray that as we think just for a few minutes about prayer and how weak during prayer. Does that not make sense? That, that when God's heart's inspired because his people, our hearts are broken and so we seek him. And, and have you ever had this happen where you start to pray and the thing you thought you wanted to pray for turns out to be different in the end because God starts to shape you and change you in the process? This, this is, is what happens here. Joshua 1.3 says it this way. God says to Joshua, I will give you every place where you set your feet as I promised Moses. What an incredible promise, right? Can you imagine that if God said, hey, wh wherever your feet hit, I'm going to give that to you. Would anyone else be doing a lot of walking? Right? It's like, huh, yeah. You know, the, the neighbor you don't like, you're walking all over his property, right? <laughs> hey, buddy, I got your house, you know? I mean, this is kind of a crazy promise. Now, Joshua is the guy who took over for Moses. So when, when Moses was sort of finished uh, leading Israel, uh, and Moses now gone out of the picture, so Joshua is the one who steps up and is leading Israel. And it's interesting, because if you read just after this verse, uh, just a few verses later, um, Joshua's having sort of a crisis a little bit. And, he, and he's thinking to himself, you know, I, I may not be a leader who's as good as Moses. Or, 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 you know, I mean, oh, God just used him in some great ways. I don't know if God can do that through me. And, and what does God say to Joshua? He says, be strong and courageous for I am with you. Because God being with us is more important than our abilities.
God's presence with us is more important than how good of a leader we, we may be, or any of that kind of thing. So, so God's basically saying, I'm with you, and so me plus you equals way more than anything. So don't worry about if you're as good or compare yourself to everybody else. You and me together, we can change the world. And then a few chapters later, this, this great promise that, that God gives, hey, Joshua, everywhere your feet step, I'm, I'm going to give that to you. He has a chance to, to play this out, doesn't he? Because uh, as they go in and they start to, to receive the promised land that, that God was going to give to his people, one of the places that was very hostile was Jericho. Anybody else ever hear of Jericho, right? If you ever went to Sunday school, you may have sung a song about that. I'm not going to sing it for you. You can thank God. Um, and, and so for six days, God sort of said, walk around Jericho. And then on the seventh day, they walked around seven times. And does anyone know what happened? The walls came down. The walls came Yeah, I, I'm not going to. You almost got me. I almost sort of jumped in and sang that part, but I don't even really know the tune. It would have been really bad. Um, the walls fell down because the two things that happened were where Joshua was, was willing to listen to God, and he was also willing to walk. Because sometimes what we do is we kind of hide away in our closets, and we say, well, I'll talk to God, and I'll listen to him. And we're waiting, and we're waiting, and we're waiting, but we're not out moving, right? And sometimes we're out moving, but we don't take the time to listen to God and to actually talk to him. And so both of these things start to happen. Let me ask you guys this right now. I want you to think in your mind. You don't have to say it out, but I want you to identify. When, when I ask you, what do you need to walk and pray circles around? What is it for you in your life when you think about that? Do you need to listen to God seriously on and invite him to work and move? For you, maybe it's your family. Maybe as we kick off this prayer initiative, uh, the, these 40 days, for you, maybe you just need to walk around your house a little bit at night and, and, and pray for your spouse or pray for your kids. Or maybe walk around your house. Or maybe for you, you hate where you work. <laughs> Please don't, don't cheer or raise hands or anything. But, but maybe that means for you that you need to go there five minutes early and just walk around one time and say, God, I want to be the presence of of Jesus in my workplace, and maybe I've just complained and not tried to do that. And let God lead and speak. Do you see how that works? <laughs> Walk around your neighbor. Maybe God will... No, no, no. <laughs> so, so think about that. What do you need to circle? Because if we believe that prayer changes things, we ought to pray, right? All right. So... Thought number two. So first one is prayer changes things. The second one's more of a question. Some of you may say, okay, that sounds good, but how in the world do I pray? You know, because for some of us, there, there are some of you here possibly, and I know some of you actually, some of you may be rock stars at prayer. Huh? That's kind of cool. And, and that's awesome. And I wish more of us were prayer rock stars. Because prayer changes things. But this bit of what I want to say is not for you. If you're the rock star of prayer, uh, this ho will hopefully encourage you. But this is, is not for you. If you only pray when you're out of options, like I've tried everything else, so maybe I'm going to pray now. If you never pray, if you pray so little that if, if we had you write it on your connection card today, tell us how much you pray. You'd be embarrassed to tell the truth. It may actually lie anonymously on your connection card. Um, if that's you, you're the person that I want to talk to today about this. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11 says it this way. Ask, and it will have conversations started to say this. We're trying to figure out during this prayer initiative, what it looks like for us as a family for the very first time to start praying together. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. As a pastor, I don't know that there's like, there's maybe one thing I can hear that would like give me more joy than to hear of a family because of what we've been talking about as a church. And, and last week, 
I think oh, just right around 60 of you signed up to be a part of, of this prayer initiative that begins with kind of this event and starts in a deeper way on, on Tuesday. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. But, but this family, they're like, hey, we're trying to figure out what it looks like for us to pray together as a family. We've never done that before. Some of you may be here and you've not really prayed together as a family before. This may be a great thing for you to do. So this story was, was in my mind, and I met with somebody uh, the very next day, and, and, and they were just talking about a, a need they had uh, for housing. And, and so God really just sort of prompted me, and I'm like, you know what? I, I get you only have so much money to be able to do that, and, and, and you don't know of any good options, especially the size you need for your family. But what if you were just to, like, drive around together and pray and ask God to, to open a door. Now, I want you to know, that wasn't just a tactic to sort of get somebody out of my office. Hey, I just go pray and drive around and good enough. All right, go. You know? No, no, no. I, I really felt like God was saying that this would be a, a good step. And, and, and so it was two days later. And uh, Bethany and I and Christopher were coming back from Worcester on his birthday and we, we just turned down a random street in Loudonville that I've maybe been on three times since I've lived here two years ago, right? In the last two years. So we drive down this street, and out in front of this house, I see this family with an older gentleman. And so we beep and wave, and they kind of wave us in. And they say, hey, this guy's renting this huge house for way cheaper than anything else we've been able to find. And, and so I was like, did you, were you, did you guys drive around and pray? And they're like, well, we just kind of started, but this all happened so quick. And, and this guy heard that, that, that this family had faith and was trying to trust God for providing a big enough space for the right price. And he literally walked next door to his wife and came back like less than five minutes later and said, you know what? If you have that kind of faith, I'm, you're approved. It, it was awesome. You just got to pray. I had someone say this to me yesterday. God does a really good job of figuring things out, but we do a really bad job of letting him do that. Right? All right, so, so here's the, the last thing. If prayer works... And prayer is easy. Like the only trick is that we just got to keep up with it. We got to keep doing it. Like don't pray as a family later today and then quit tomorrow. Don't do that. If that's it, um, here, here's the last piece. Just do it. Right? Pray. Pray now. Because if prayer works and it does, and the only real trick is sticking with it, why don't we all pray more? Well, 2 Chronicles 7.14 says this, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wickedness, from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I love that, don't you? Amen. So... So why don't we pray more? I'll tell you. I mean, I think the scripture tells us because we're too proud. We don't like to humble ourselves, right? We are, aren't just too proud. We're too smart. We think we can figure it out. I don't need to humble myself. I don't need to seek God. I, you know, I, I can work hard. I can think about this. I can do some things and I can figure it out myself. And, and like the scripture says, a lot of times we're too evil. We need to turn from our wickedness. We need to turn, and you may, you may go, well, I'm not evil, right? Anybody else here selfish ever? Right? Yeah, come on. I mean, and I could go on and, we, we are, right? We, we, we're looking out for us. We want what we want. We want to do what we want to do instead of trusting in God. And, and that's the problem. We won't turn from us and turn to him and let him forgive our sin and heal our land as only he can do. But here's, here's the good news. 40 days can change that. 
40 days can change the wickedness in my heart and the wickedness in your heart if we will just engage. So we've been talking for weeks, and I'm going to tell it one more time, because if you haven't signed up, we have over 60 now, but, but if you haven't signed up, I really want to encourage you to do this. And uh, last week the sheet looked different, but because we're outside and we brought like 4,500 pieces of paper today, um, we just kind of made it a part of this yellow sheet. Um, we have these three events, and if you're here today, you've already made the first one, so you're a third of the way to accomplishing the big events piece. In three weeks, that Sunday in the afternoon, we're going to meet back here. In the afternoon, we'll let you know the time, and we're actually going to go on a prayer walk down this bike path. How cool would it be if all of us plus more of us got together and we just walked in mass? Like I said before, if we're like bumping bikers and runners off, by accident, of course, uh, but people are going, what is that? Those are people who have come here to pray and to ask God to work and move in their lives and in our community in ways that only he can. How cool would that be? I think that's incredible. And then three weeks later, we're going to end on August 18th, and we're going to invite people to, to we're going to have a big map up of the church, and we're going to invite you to, to circle a block here or where you live or wherever that you're going to you're going to pray and we just want people walking around every block in this whole region praying for God's kingdom and blessing to come. Do you, do you see how that would change things? So those are the three big events and, and then uh, you just heard 2 Chronicles 714. We want to invite people to, to pray at 714 in the a.m. or for those of you who don't like the a.m. 714 in the p.m. based on this that we just want to for 40 days, continue to turn, and it can be for two minutes. God, I, thank you for this day, or help me, it's been a tough, how, however that works. But can you imagine if hundreds of us were praying to God every single day for 40 days? It starts this Tuesday, by the way. And then the third thing is, is this book. And, uh, and all, of, all the staff and, and our ministry leaders and elders have one of these. Um, if you don't have one and you want one, uh, we have a book table set up right here. It's the only thing we brought down today. Uh, they're 10 bucks. You don't have to worry about weird change. Uh, and we just want to encourage people to read, the, read it by yourself. Uh, read it as a family. Read it with a small group of people, however you want to do this. Because I, I've already had people say to me, that's all right, you can just let it go. i um, done with that now. Um, the people who've already started to read it who are like 12, 13, 14 days in that are saying things like, we actually, as Tom said, have a, have a video set up. Uh, our uh, website, nhcircles.com. So uh, it'll be blasted out to our Facebook page. There's daily devotionals. We just want to do everything we can to help you guys be successful starting this Tuesday that we would pray every day and really engage with God as we never, ever have before um, for 40 full days. So I want to end by telling you guys about the last uh, 24 hours and really the last week so as you know, this, for whatever reason, this year has been the rainy season in Ohio, right? And, uh, and so we've kind of had our eyes on the forecast, and it was weird every day. I kept, actually a guy who's here, a buddy of mine, he kept saying to me, you know, uh, it's supposed to rain every day for the next 10 days, and it didn't matter where we got in the week, it was still supposed to rain every day for the next 10 days. And so even yesterday, we're, we're toy we were down here checking things out and, and worried about the weather and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and even last night, I didn't sleep well because I kept looking at the radar and I kept praying. And I mean, it, you know, I, I was worried. Um, I, I wanted this to be a good experience for you. And yeah, Sandy's there. She lacked faith. She brought umbrellas today. Uh, and, but, but here's the thing I want you guys to hear. I, I really felt like God saying to me late last night after a lot of toil and, and prayer and trying to listen... I felt like God saying, we need to do this down at Riverside Park like we've been talking for the last number of weeks. So even this morning, Jeremy and I were down here at like 6.20 or something like that. And, and we're looking around and the sky's gray. And I, I did, it, did anyone else look at the radar this morning? Literally, like, here's Loudonville. And like, like this is Loudonville. And the, like, the storm went like this. Like, it, it's insane what the storm did. Huh? But, but even, even bigger than that, there, there, were two, um, there were two things that really stood out yesterday. 
when, when other people came down. Uh, one was how squishy the ground was. And, and, and actually, Bethany saw something this week where at the, at the swim meet, somebody put a chair down and sat down, and then the, the back things like sunk in, and they, next thing you know, there's like four limbs up in the air, and they're doing this kind of weird kind of dance that thankfully none of you have done yet. Um, and, and so that was one concern. And the other concern is there was about, I don't know, 45 geese out here. And yeah, there's, you, know, you almost should walk like this when you're walking around here. And, and so those were legitimate concerns that we had. And so we, we checked out other locations and even you know, thought about, well, do we just sort of go back to the church? And, and again, after a lot of toil, here's what I felt like God was saying to me. And to me, this is just the clearest picture of what prayer is all about. You ready? Even though in our lives, there's sinking ground everywhere. And there's crap all around us. <laughs> the trick is to keep our eyes on God and not that. Because here's the thing. I know it. It's true for you. It's true for me. Please don't look at me and say, oh, Rob's just blessed and he's got it all together. It's not true. There's sinking ground everywhere it seems like I step and there's crap all around. And the, the goal is for us not to keep our eyes on that. We need to keep our eyes on the solid rock of Jesus and talk to him and trust him regardless of what the circumstances look like. That is what prayer is. And so will you just do it? So you have opportunity to sign up, but here's what we want to do. We're going we're gonna to come back together and we're going to pray and we're going to do a closing song. But before we do that, we just wanted to leave kind of a, a, a 10 to 15 minute window. And here's, here's what I'd invite you to do. I want you to, in a minute, get up. You may want to stay in your chair. That's fine too. But I just want to invite you to, maybe you want to walk over by the, the kids' play thing and play for the ch children of our community. Or maybe you want to walk over by the ball field and, and pray for people who come here that they would sense something different about this town and encounter God in a new way. Or maybe you want to hang out under the pavilion and just pray for people who are going to use this space that, that they would even sense something different because we were here, not because of us, but because we prayed and God's presence is here in, in a more tangible way. However that works, again, you may be here and you may go, you know what, I, I, again, I, I'm uncomfortable doing that. You don't have to go with anyone. You can go by yourself. Take, take this one handout we gave you that has a hand on it, and it just gives you some, some suggestions. Pray for friends and family. Pray for leaders and teachers. Just pray a prayer of thanksgiving. God, thanks for what I do have. I may want this, 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 and this. I may need that, 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 and that. But thanks that you've given me health and my family or whatever that is for you. Pray for the weak, sick, or poor. Pray, pray for yourself. Um, and so, again, we can talk about it, and we can talk about it, and we can talk about it. Uh, but before we pray together, before we sing one of my favorite all-time songs, um, I just want to give you some space. And let's take 10 minutes and, and just go wherever. When, when we start, um, the band starts playing again, that'll be time to come back. But act, let's, let's put it into practice, amen? Like, let's not just have a message about prayer and then, like, cook some hot dogs. Let's have a message about prayer and pray. So New Hope, let, let's do this. Take this. You can go as a family. You can go by yourself. Ten minutes, and then we'll come back and close up. Nothing can separate, even if I ran away. Your love never fades. No.
wasn't too hard, was it? No? Actually, you know, uh, Bethany came up with that little hand thing. She found it somewhere and put it together. And it was actually going to be a handout for the kids, and we liked it so much that, uh, that we thought, let's give it to everybody. And isn't it cool? Uh, because we pray for our friends and our family, right? We pray for our teachers and our leaders. The biggest finger on our hand is thankfulness. So we just say thank you most. And then this finger actually is the weakest finger on your hand. I don't know if you knew that or not. So we pray for the weak and the sick and the poor. And then lastly, we, we want to pray for us. But we want to end there instead of always starting there, amen? And, and how easy is it for us not just here, but for us as a church to take 40 days and allow this to change our lives. So again, I just want to encourage you guys, if you haven't done it already, take this yellow card and check that, that you want to be a part of these things and put it in the tall red box over there. We, we really want to do this together. We think that this can be a huge thing for us as a church. If you want to grab a book, they're over here on this table for 10 bucks. But again, more than talking about stuff, we want to be a people who pray. So let's do that. God, we thank you so much for this day. God, we thank you for your blessing, even with the weather. God, that, that you took a giant storm and you skirted it all the way around us and you gave us sun in the sky. And Lord, how much of the time when the clouds come, do they come just because you know we need them? And God, how much do you give us sun exactly at the right moment when we need that too? And so God, help us not to look and all of the difficulty in life, but God, help us to keep our eyes fixed on you. And I ask in the name of Jesus that these, these next 40 days, this prayer initiative, that, that we would be a people who maybe start praying for the very first time, maybe pray as families for the first time ever. Maybe start circling something in prayer that we know that we've needed to pray about for a long time, but, but all we've done instead is complain. So God, we just want to give these days to you. We want to give our lives to you. And God, we invite you to make the difference that only you can in and through our lives as we pray. God, we continue to lift up Pastor Jeff. Be with him today in a special way and bring healing to his body. And Lord, I just pray that you continue to bless us today. Give us a great time with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Chris, don't, don't cut me off. <laughs> what we're going to do, um, you know, you're welcome to stick around. You can you can play.